Today, I will talk about uh, the distributed uh, uh, disaggregated chassis architecture or DDC and how it fits uh, AI and ML uh, networks. Okay, so first, uh, a word from our legal department. I'll give you a, a few seconds to digest it and uh, we will now uh, move on. So, uh, in the um, Core Switch group, we have three uh, product families uh, that you can see here. The Trident is more optimized for the enterprise market. Uh, the Tomahawk is more optimized for the uh, hyperscale data center market. And uh, uh, the Jericho, the DNX product line, uh, is more uh, optimized for the service provider market. Now, uh, we have uh, chosen to uh, have multiple architectures. Some of our competition has a single architecture, a single uh, device types that go to uh, to all markets. This is not the case uh, in, in Broadcom CSG. We have different uh, architectures and switch families. And as you can see from my presentation and, and heard from uh, uh, pit presentations before, uh, this is very schematic uh, split between the families. Uh, you can find, uh, I come from the DNX product line, so you can find our devices in, in data center and DCI and, and peering and, and practically every other uh, type of network that there is. So, um, what, what, is, uh, uh, what is DNX? Okay, so in DNX, we support two, uh, two architectures, uh, and uh, they are, or we, we support two types of products that are based on the same architecture. One of them is uh, here on, on the left, is the chassis or the distributed chassis architecture. Uh, we have two brands, the Jericho is the uh, processor device and the Ramon is the fabric element. And based on the same architecture, we uh, optimize devices for specific applications and, and we call it uh, Qumran. And these are centralized or standalone devices that are using fixed uh, applications. Um, today, we will talk mainly about the Jericho and Ramon devices and how they fit um, in the AI ML network. Now, you have here a list of, uh, of the main features and the main benefits that you can get with our devices. Okay, so first of all, we have non-blocking uh, switching, uh, mainly in our uh, a part of the fabric technology that uh, is, is very important in uh, AI networks. Latency is controlled and, and pretty much fixed. So this is something that you can plan uh, around and uh, uh, helps to uh, optimize and reduce the job completion time. We have debuffering technology in our devices and uh, in lossless applications like RDMA and others, uh, we can guarantee, and our switches are actually used um, today, already used today, to guarantee that there's no packet loss for sensitive applications like RDMA. Um, we have a large queuing subsystem and we have very large scale uh, packet processing forwarding database. We can support millions of uh, IP routes. Um, now, the, the next item is very important in AI ML. Okay? Our fabric technology supports automatic redundancy and protection. So this allows very fast convergence time in case of failure, and it is very predictable um, in its uh, convergence process and allows um, AI jobs to continue almost seamlessly without any interruption to the service and without any performance degradation. And last, all these devices are based on the same architecture. So it's, it's a single uh, software-based, single SDK from uh, uh, Broadcom DNX that supports all the devices. Okay, so um, let's look a little bit about um, what is required from, from the network. So typically uh, when our customers benchmark our devices and our solution, um, for AI ML, they run two types of uh, benchmarks or use cases. One of them is all reduced, where you have um, many types of uh, arrays and you need to uh, converge and reduce all, all of them into a single array, okay? Um, usually, and uh, we have um, uh, one uh, big array and you can see that uh, uh, SAMAX and, and MIN are um, usually the, uh, the functions that are being used. In all to all, um, this is the second type of benchmark. Um, then 
it involved with very large messages that are being uh, um, sent practically from every GPU to every GPU. And uh, the result of that is that you have very uh, large uh, messages running in the network, you have workload, and uh, depending on the flows, it may create congestion in some areas and congestion eventually impacts the uh, job completion time. Okay, so uh, from the network requirement, uh, first of all, the main thing is to reduce the job completion time and keep it low, okay? Because the GPU is a very uh, expensive resource for an AI network, and you want to make sure that the GPU is fully utilized as much as possible. Uh, in addition, the network characteristics include very high network utilization, and what our customers tell us is that if the utilization is not close to 100%, they will add more and more jobs, more and more processes, more and more GPUs, so they can reach the 100% the network utilization. Um, next, as, as I uh, explained in the previous slide, we end up with a small number of elephant flows uh, the, with very high bandwidth, and uh, so a large number of elephant flows and larger number of mice flows, and if, uh, if we take that and look what would be the network pain points, then in, in standard uh, load balancing, everything is flow-based, meaning that specific flows will always use the same links uh, from the first packet of the flow until the last packet of the flow. And this will eventually lead to an even uh, uh, link utilization. It doesn't matter if this is uh, uh, what type of, of hashing functionality is used, there'll always be some uh, unfairness between the links and you'll always end up with uh, links that are loaded more than others. You'll get, uh, you'll reach flows that can actually traverse the, the, traf the network easily while others are uh, create congestion, backed up and uh, uh, increase the latency. Okay, so all that is being solved with the DNX technology and in the next slide I will uh, explain how does this work? So um, um, we're talking about DNX and we're talking here about a specific DNX um, solution that is called the distributed disaggregated chassis, which uh, as, as the name uh, implies, we take the um, traditional chassis architecture where you have fabric cards and line cards and we break it into uh, its building blocks of uh, fixed box with uh, uh, which stands for the line card and another fixed box that checks for, for a fabric card and you mix and match them and uh, we'll dive into that in the coming slides. Now, this architecture is native for AI ML. Okay? As I said, this is solved by the DNX technology because it provides perfect load balancing, balancing and all the devices, okay, all the different uh, um, line cards, so to speak, or the Jericho devices, create a single, very large routing domain. So this, this really is a, a single hop network from any GPU to any GPU. In addition, the network is fully scheduled. So there's no, uh, there's no congestion. And if something uh, comes up, the network uh, automatically schedules everything and eliminates the congestion. And, uh, the risk, the, the radix is, is very high. It's easy, uh, very easy to scale and you'll see it in the coming slide. Now, as I said, it creates the largest uh, router possible. Okay, it's, uh, this, this is because you can arrange the different uh, um, boxes. The, the, they're called NCF and NCP and you'll see them in the next slide in, in a way that you can increase and increase the scale as, as you need. And last, this is not just a concept. This is already in deployment. Okay, um, it was first announced, uh, as you can see here, by at and a couple of years ago. And uh, since we have uh, many other customers uh, deploying, designing, we have a wide ecosystem uh, for the hardware design, for the software, uh, for the software design of these uh, DDC systems. Okay, uh, so when I say here that uh, um, AI ML 
workloads are solved with DNX, this is solved and proven and being tested by our customer. Okay, so what are the building blocks of, uh, of this uh, DDC? Okay, so today what we have in deployment is based on what we call the Jericho 2 generation. Okay, the, I said, I explained that there are two boxes. The, the NCP is, is your line card, network cloud processor. And we have the third generation of this built around a device that we call the Jericho 2C Plus uh, in production. Uh, that supports uh, 400 gigi ports. And the fabric card or the fabric box is called NCF, the Network Cloud Fabric, and the device in it is, is Ramon. And when you uh, uh, use these boxes, you can scale to, your, to a theoretical number of 8K 400 gigi ports. This is in deployment uh, uh, today and uh, being... Uh, tested and, and in PLCs in many other locations. We have many, many customers for this architecture. And this is logically similar, if not identical to the big routers that you have and, and, you, and you see in the market that are being deployed for multiple generations based on, on the DNX silicon, the, the Jericon remote devices. Next year, um, the DDC will scale out to uh, 800 gigi ports and 32K such ports. We will, we will have uh, two new devices. This is the Jericho 3 generation, and customers are already designing uh, the hardware for uh, these uh, NCP and NC NCF uh, designs based on the Jericho 3 and the Ramon 3 uh, devices. From the software perspective, all the devices are compatible. So every investment that our customers have done and are doing on the um, NCP3 and NCF can be fully utilized on the next generation uh, devices. Okay? And as I said, when you combine all them, you have a very large scale router. Okay, So uh, theoretically, you can build a, a one big router that has 32K 800 gigi ports, or you'll be able to do it next year. I have a question. So if theoretically, you said theoretically, currently you can do it 18,400 giggy ports, correct? What's the, what's the biggest one that's actually in production? Because theoretical is great, but what's in practice? Like what's the biggest network out there like this using this technology? Uh, so the biggest one has something like uh, one petabit per second of interfaces. Okay, or a little, a little less than that. This is an example of, of a DDC cluster. Okay, so you have the GPUs down here at the bottom and connectivity is, is 400 gig, it can be 100 gig or, uh, but better to have it 400 gig uh, today, 800 gig tomorrow. Um, you have the first row, your leaf uh, switches would be the NCPs. This is where all the packet processing, all the routing, all the forwarding, all the scheduling decisions are being taken by the Jericho devices. And your spine is built on multiple NCF boxes. Uh, these, these are the remote devices. From the routing perspective, they are completely transparent. So this is why I said that this is actually a single hop router um, that includes all the boxes. And uh, from the switching, uh, the, the fabric switching perspective, the Ramon provides something that is excellent um, in the context of, of the AI ML that we're talking about, because the technology that we have in, in the Ramon device and in the NCF, or better said, the interface between the two boxes is not flow-based and it's not packet-based. We are converting everything to sales and all flows use all links all the time. Okay, I'll say it again, all the flows, regardless of where they come from or where they go, they use all the links between it Jericho and all the Ramon devices. So every packet, every flow will use all the available bandwidth of the fabric, meaning that you never get uh, polarization, no uh, ECMP or link aggregation inefficiencies. There's always enough bandwidth. The fabric is always congestion free. And in addition, uh, it keeps the latency very low. So because there's never buildup. Yeah, there's no, uh, it's not a routing domain. As I said, this is, um, you know, virtually wiring and, and very fast connectivity 
between the, the NCPs, the Jericho devices. Uh, the, the Jericho is responsible, uh, there's a, a scheduling protocol between the Jericho devices and the routing, as I said, uh, happens there. Now, another layer of flexibility that our customers really like and, and applies uh, uh, very well to AIML is the, uh, the flexibility in placing the, the boxes, the switches. And as you can see, everything here is, is optical links between everything. And some customers choose to take the NCPs and place them as top of racks, very close to the GPUs, minimize the distance between the top of rack device or the top of rack switch and the GPUs, and make the cabling between the NCP and the NCF long. This is uh, uh, can be uh, due to uh, actual space, it can be due to power consumption or, or any other uh, reason that they have. Um, alternatively, the NCP and the NCF can be placed together in the networking rack. And then the connectivity, you can have another top of rack next to the GPU, or you can uh, connect directly from the GPU to the, to the NCP with uh, long uh, opti cables. And of course, there's in between, you can uh, use every uh, NCP and place it as a middle of row uh, kind of uh, solution. And all these physical decisions have no impact on the performance and no impact of, um, on the, the behavior. Okay, so logically it's exactly the same. Okay, now what happens if, if you need to grow, okay? And, and uh, your cluster needs to grow and you need higher bandwidth and more uh, ports to connect, then this is very easy, okay? You can add, uh, another layer, you see that we have here another layer of NCFs. And then you can connect multiple single stage uh, DDCs into a single multi-stage DDC and increase the scale significantly. You can connect more GPUs, you can have much higher bandwidth, and this is how you can reach the 32K ports um, with DDC. And uh, from the software perspective and, and the router behavior, this is still a single uh, routing domain. And the software is the same. All the investment you've done is exactly the same. And you just have a, a huge router now that uh, connects to 32K GPUs or a very large AI ML cluster. So how do uh, how is it uh, being used? Okay, so as as I started, what you really want is, is to reduce the job completion time as much as possible. Okay, the network should uh, help to uh, make sure that job completion time remains low. And I'll have here uh, two illustrations of the two main two main benefits that you can get with the DNX architecture. Okay, so. First one is the perfect load balancing. Okay, as I said, every flow can use every link uh, in, in the fabric. So we have, we have a number of flows. You can see the arrows down here. We have the, the blue, the red, the yellow, and the green flows. They all uh, start from different GPUs and all, uh, all go to the same uh, NCP, to the same Jericho device. So the Jericho device takes all, uh, all these flows and what it does, it breaks every uh, packet uh, to, to cells, okay? The cells are ideally uh, the same size, and if not, they're very similar in size. And this allows to create uh, uh, this perfect load balancing, okay? Because every flow uses all the links. In our example, you can see that um, um, I'm focusing on the red flow here, okay? This is uh, my example you can see that the red flow is, is broken to different, in, in our, my example, into four cells, and each one will go to a different NCF. So the red flow can really get the full bandwidth of, uh, of the fabric. If this was, uh, if this was uh, Ethernet uh, fabric, then the red flow would choose a specific link and would, uh, would use this link and if we have a large red flow and uh, a small uh, yellow flow, they wouldn't be able to share the, the bandwidth resource. 
In our implementation, they share the bandwidth resource, so there's never congestion. So we have we have uh, split our flows into cells and sending them over the fabric. Now, when they reach the, the NCS, the remote devices, the remote device knows automatically where to send. Uh, and I'm staying here only with the uh, red flow, uh, for example. It knows that all the red cells need to go to this specific NCP, to this Jericho device, because this is the destination NCP and behind it is the destination GPU. Okay? The other cells each go to the, its uh, destination. Okay, So again, there's no congestion. They get the full bandwidth and when they leave the Jericho device, we build again the packet and it is sent to, to uh, GPU B. And at the same time, the other flows, each one is being received by its target destination NCP and is being sent to the destination GPU. Okay, so uh, there's virtually no interference between, uh, between the flows and you get perfect load balancing. You can use all the links. If one of the link fails, there's automatic uh, um, uh, recovery, self-healing. The, the cell spraying of all links continues, but if there's a fail, the, the specific link within a few microseconds is being uh, deleted from the forwarding tables and the rest of the bandwidth is being utilized. So there's no uh, software intervention needed to, to fix it. Of course, there's an alert that it needs to be uh, uh, replaced or fixed, but the traffic continues without any interruption. So after uh, explaining all that, what you can see here is in the chart is that um, the job completion time using the Jericho uh, Ramon cluster, the DNX technology is always lower. And you can save uh, up to 30% of, uh, of the time by using uh, a Jericho Ramon comparing to, uh, to a classic or standard uh, cluster. So I have a question on that process there. So uh, first, I just want to make sure you, you're still using actual Ethernet encapsulation across this hall. It's not proprietary inside so, here, right? So this part, this is standard Ethernet. This is cell-based uh, switching. Okay. We, we break every packet into uh, cells, and we can actually break multiple packets into a single cell and, and pack into cells and spray all the cells uh, through the fabric. And I assume then the, the cells are all identical size and then that's how you solve the problem of making sure the order of everything is correct when you, when you spit it back out on the other side. Yeah, this is correct, yes. So it's very ATM-like. No, it's, it's very different from ATM because, um, because this is not, yeah, th this is uh, uh, not uh, a TDM, and uh, this is not, uh, you know, th there's, everything is scheduled, as I said. Okay, there's no, nothing is, is random or not, there's, the scheduling is, uh, is very advanced and sophisticated. We don't have time and, uh, to get into it, and uh, there's, a, there's a full protocol for each and every cell and packet. I would not for every cell, but for every flow, there's a protocol. And every uh, uh, a, a flow, let's say, again, the red flow will not be sent from this Jericho device to this Jericho device through the fabric unless this Jericho says, okay, yeah, I have, I, I can get it. You can, please, please uh, uh, bring it on. I, I can actually forward to the GPU. So the scheduling okay. so is dy dynamic and changes all the time and, and very sophisticated. And, and what is the standard that this is using? It's it's a DNX protocol. It's it's something that we uh, have in deployment for uh, over a decade. Uh, there's a um, being used by by all uh, customers. It's it's not uh, a standard. It's part of the DNX solution. Okay, so this is a proprietary protocol then, not a standard. No, correct. Okay. Okay. Um, by the way, th this uh, chart, and this is uh, uh, being, uh, it's a combination of both uh, 
So we are in, in uh, multiple engagement with the IML uh, players and designers. And this chart was actually uh, started in, in simulation. And, and this is what was expected to be seen based on, uh, on the DNX technology and was actually tested by customers and, uh, and was proven to provide the, the exact same results, all, almost 100% the same in, uh, in testing, in benchmarking. Okay, so this, this is actual uh, results, not just a simulation. Another uh, uh, attribute and key feature that is very uh, useful here is the end-to-end -end congestion control. As I said, everything is scheduled and every Jericho is aware of all the flows that are in the network or in the, the traverse the fabric. And there's no... Uh, uh, traffic flowing over the, the fabric unless we know that the destination Jericho and the destination GPU uh, has enough uh, space, let's call it, has enough uh, buffer to get this data. And this is very different from Ethernet. So um, if if we use uh, uh, to, okay, here, uh, I use this uh, stop sign to symbolize uh, congestion, okay? if in a standard Ethernet network, okay, if we have congestion in, in a specific uh, um, GPU, it was, would raise the hand and send a PFC, uh, flow control, pause, ECN, wh whatever. You know, I, I write here PFC, but it can be any type of, of flow control message back to this switch and would tell it, hey, stop sending me traffic because I cannot get it anymore. Okay. I'm, I'm, and in standard Ethernet work, network, uh, it can end up in something like this, okay? You can have multiple congestion point, and uh, this, is, this is called PFC pro uh, propagation, where this pause can create congestion and head of flight blocking in multiple locations in the network. So this uh, reduces the bandwidth, the overall bandwidth in the uh, network. This would uh, eventually end up in increasing the... Um, job completion time. And this is not what we want to see in AI ML. Now, if this is DNX, this is how it looks like. Okay, there's a, a PFC or pause indication from the GPU, but it doesn't propagate to anywhere else in the network because the fabric is scheduled. And as I as I explained before, if if I get a pause from, from this guy, from uh, GPU B, that tells me, please don't send me traffic, I'm congested, then traffic from A to B will not even reach the fabric, okay? It will be held here in this Jericho device and wait until, uh, until B says, okay, I'm ready and you can send me the data. And be, because of that, there's no propagation, there's no interference between flows, there's no uh, uh, impact whatsoever on the uh, performance of the Furby. What you see here in, in the chart is, uh, so the way we, we created and our customers created congestion in benchmarking is by limiting the GPU uh, receive capabilities, okay? So they uh, had three uh, levels, okay? Low, medium, and high congestion level. This uh, changes the, the pause or the PFC frequency that this uh, uh, GPU would send. And what you can see here is with, that with Jericho and Ramon, it, it stays about the same. It is maintained. Uh, of course, there's some impact because this GPU is, is less active or more congested, but the overall impact is not very high. In standard Ethernet network, what you would expect is that the PFC propagation and the handle blocking would increase and increase uh, linearly, if not exponentially, the job completion time and will make everything uh, uh, less efficient, obviously. To summarize, okay, when we use a DDC in AIML, then you get uh, multiple benefits and I'm, I'm listing uh, the main ones here, okay? So most important is the perfect load balancing that you have in the fabric, cell spraying, never congested, never oversubscribed, 
no hashing, no polarization, no inefficiencies. Okay, it's as it says, as, as simple as that. Perfect load balancing with uh, uh, self healing capabilities and uh, uh, the ability to run all flows using all links. Second is the end to end of scheduling. Okay, the, the protocol between the Jericho devices uh, allows queuing of messages and flows in one device with the uh, intention not to overload the fabric and keep the network available for flows that can actually traverse and reach the destination. We have lossless operation. I didn't have time to talk about it today, but uh, our virtual output queuing and debuffering subsystem uh, identify and can allow uh, keeping uh, sensitive flows like RDMA and others and keep them as uh, as a lossless operation without um, any any risk of retransmission and so on. Latency is controlled and low. Again, because you use, because there's no congestion, then the latency wouldn't increase. It would stay the same all the time for all the flows, regarding, regardless of elephant versus mice um, and uh, the packet sizes. And last, the ability to uh, scale and keep it always as a single routing domain, one big router, helps to simplify the management and the creation and handling of all the flows in, uh, in this DDC network and simplify, simplifies the um, using a DDC and AIML. Now, for those of you that uh, would like uh, further reading, I have here two pointers for uh, two articles. One of them is a white paper that was uh, written by China Telecom uh, with Broadcom help. It is written in Chinese. I can tell you that Google Translate does an excellent job in tra <laughs> translating uh, what is written there. And you can uh, see that basically China Telecom tells you, in other words, what I told you uh, today. The other one is an article written by my colleague, uh, uh, colleague uh, Henry Wu, um, reducing job completion time in AI ML clusters. And this, you can find it in the Broadcom uh, uh, blog page on broadcom.com. How broadly yeah. deployed is this uh, architecture? Do you have a lot of these out there now? Or? Okay, so let's, uh, so when we talk about architecture, there the are two aspects for that. The logical archite architecture is, uh, identical to uh, the traditional big routers in a chassis that uh, you've seen for, for many years. And, and this is being in deployed for uh, over a decade now. The DDC um, architecture where we take the, the chassis and, and disaggregate it is in deployment for uh, two to three years now. Okay, there's a lot of, uh, um, I, I think that recently, uh, um, I read somewhere that at t says that as part of its white box initiative, about 50% of its core traffic runs on, runs on uh, white boxes. Okay. And this is one example. This is a public example. There's a lot of non-public examples that I cannot give. Uh, but we have many, many uh, partners and customers that use this architecture today. And we have, of course, AI ML players that are uh, committed to uh, um, productize its DDC. Uh, 